So this one says an 18 kilonewton force is applied to a beam that is supported by a roller at point A and connected rigidly to a wall at point B. Now neglecting self weight, determine the reaction forces that keep this beam in static equilibrium. Now remember the general framework, we're drawing a free body diagram, we're writing out of our, all of our equations and we're ignoring step three for now. So the first step is to draw out that free body diagram. We know that our object of interest is that bar, is that beam. So what we're going to do is actually look and revisit our four step process to creating this free body diagram. We sketch that complete object, that beam. We draw all the external support reactions as well as the cables, forces on the system. We identify each force uniquely. We give its magnitude, direction, and then we add in any relevant dimensions. So our first step again is to ske sketch that complete object. There it is, beautiful beam. We know that uh, we can now go to step number two, which is draw all the external support reactions as well as any springs, cables, or other forces. We do know we have an 18 kilonewton force acting somewhere on the beam, so we just illustrated it there. So identifying all these forces, again, we have that downward 18 kilonewton force on the beam, but we also have a series of reactions or supports at both points A and B. These, these reactions are what we would traditionally call support reactions. And the type of connection at these points is what determines what the basic reaction will look like. So we have a roller at point A and a rigid connection at point B. That's a fixed connection at point B. Now starting with the roller connection, this is the simplest of the support reactions, allowed, allowing freedom to move parallel to the support surface and to rotate, but it's restraining from moving perpendicular to the support uh, surface. So in this case, this roller is going to prevent the beam from moving basically down. It has weight, so it's not gonna move up. So it's basically not going to be able to move down. However, it can move side to side and it can rotate. And that's what roller supports uh, that's what the reaction is going to look like. So it has zero horizontal resistance. It's only vertical in this case. So we, we're placing that vertical force at that location. Now point B, we have a rigid connection to the wall. This is a fixed connection, fixed support. Now either way, this support reaction restrains both the translations in addition to the rotation such that three separate equations of equilibrium are represented. So a fixed connection has horizontal, it has vertical, and it has a moment resistance, which is what I illustrated right now. It's not allowing the beam to go up and down, it's not allowing it to go side to side, and it's not allowing it at that point to rotate. So these are all the forces acting on this beam in this problem. There really isn't, again, much we can do with this. We have to move to the next step, which is to identify each force with the proper magnitude and the direction by labeling all the unknowns with unique nomenclature. Now again, nomenclature doesn't matter what you name it. You can name it whatever you want to do. Of course, I always like F sub A or wherever that point is, force acting at that point. I like moments to be defined at that point. And of course, we already have our force acting on the beam, our, our downward force, the magnitude already defined. So now that we have all of our forces defined in some way, or at least identified, we need to just add all of our relevant dimensions. And what I'm going to do, as I always do, is just pull over everything that I possibly can from our original illustration. Again, we do not want to go back. Just please listen to me and pull over everything. It doesn't matter if you think it's too much. So there you go. There's our fully developed free body diagram for this particular problem. 
We can now move forward to step two in our process, which is write out and solve the equations of equilibrium and any unknown support reactions and forces. So here's our three equations of equilibrium. So remember that the first two are translational. They don't, um, that, uh, that uh, is summing up all the movement in the up, down, left, right direction. And then we got the forces or the moments summing zero. That's our rotational equilibrium equation. So again, we're just going to go ahead and assume that this x this is a traditional x y axis, as you can assume. There's no um, inclined plane, so there's no need to do any, you know, diagram or illustration of what we're working with. So let's go ahead and start with our translational equations of equilibrium, and particularly let's start with component x. So gathering all of our X um, components, we get an equation of F sub B X. So as you can see, since there's only one component, it has to sum to zero. That means that force, that horizontal force is going to be zero. F sub B X is equal to zero. Now doing the same for our Y uh, components, we sum them all up. We do have three components. So we have the Y components equal to F sub A plus F sub B A or B Y minus 18 kilonewtons. Now for rotational, we are going to take the moment about B again. We're trying to eliminate one of the unknowns and what better place to do it than at the fixed support side. So the moment that is created here is 18. Uh, oh, again, I'm using counterclockwise, as you can see with that uh, notation as a positive direction. Now, um, the sum is going to be equal to 18 times 2.5 because it's two and a half meters from the right side. Uh, take, that's taking six meters minus three and a half. And then we got minus FA times six because that's the full length of the beam. Rearranging to solve for F sub A, we get 18 times 2.5 divided by six, we get seven and a half kilonewtons. That is a correct uh, reaction. Now plugging that into the F sub Y equation, 10.5. So the correct answers are, so F sub A is 7.5 kilonewtons, F sub B is going to be 10.5 kilonewtons.